Hello, and welcome to another Cavalry tutorial. I'm Kyle Daly, and today I'm gonna to show you how I automated the creation of these social assets using the Image Smart folder within Cavalry. Let's jump in so I can show you what I mean. Okay, to get started with this, we're gonna to need to be in a professional version of Cavalry because the Image Smart folder is only available in Cavalry Pro. So, once you're in Cavalry Pro, import image smart folder, and then let's navigate to the folder where we have our collection of videos. In this instance, I have this output folder that has the 36 MP4s that I exported for 36 days of type. I'm gonna import this, and sometimes it takes a minute or two for Cavalry to index a image smart folder like this, especially when it's video. So. We'll be right back after that finishes. So we have in our assets now this output folder, the folder name of the folder that we imported. And we can see it's a smart folder and it contains 36 images. In this instance though, the 36 MP4 videos. So we bring this into our timeline. You can see automatically we've generated a canvas that's going to output uh, one of our videos as a shader to that canvas. And the length is set automatically but we're gonna drag this out to fit the entire length of our composition. And then within the output image shader itself, if you select this, there's a looping option. We're gonna check that because we wanna loop all of these videos back and forth with one another. Now, you can see that this is the makeup of this object, a canvas, the shader itself, and then this output smart folder is what allows us to access the various items within our smart folder. And you can see, if you're gonna use this technique, you're going to need a consistent naming convention. So I have a prefix before each of these files, that is this 36 dot underscore 09, and then underscore, and then the designator for whichever character of the series that this particular video is. And you can see if we change this from nine to zero, it will change and reference the video with that name. And this is how we access all of the different items within this folder. But how do we then automate this so we can use it to firstly create a sequence where it's every single video animation in a sequence, one after the other. We'll call this real, and then we'll take a look at this folder and see that Underneath the path, or to the right here, we have this ability to add a string generator. So we're gonna connect a string generator to this path. And this will allow us to designate exactly what the path is and then automate certain features of it. There are a couple different options for string generators, but the best that works in this instance is going to be the formatted string. And the formatted string allows you to add different variables in as new strings. So what we'll do is add 36 dot underscore 09 underscore and then this curly braces zero curly braces is the reference to this string here and right now it says cavalry app and then at the end we just want the dot mp4 and if we were to change this to a or b you can see it's referencing these but we really need this to reference every single one so how do we create a way to reference all 36 characters. Well, we can add another string to this, and then we can substring certain parts of it. So we'll go to the string generator on the right here of our index zero string. We'll click this, and then we'll set this value to none. And what we want here is every single character and number that is in our entire series, so all 36 of these. And maybe there's a way to automate even this process, but for the sake of simplicity and time, I'm just gonna manually enter all of these characters. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and then O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, now we have a 36 character string, and we want to substring this, and extract only a single character at each time. So to do this, and this is why we've created the second generator, we wanna manipulate this string object. So if we go to manipulators and add a new manipulator here, 
we have automatically added the shuffle and you can see that's going to rearrange the output of that string that 36 character string but what we want to do is only extract one and we'll do that with substring so if you change the manipulator type to substring and then set this to zero as well you will have a reference to each character within this series so i can just connect start position to end position set this to zero and then animate this by setting a keyframe at frame zero and i'll go to the end and i'll drag this all the way up to 35 which would be the last character in our series and if we play this back you can see that every five frames or so the substring is changing and extracting a different character and allowing us to automate the creation of this sequence. So using this logic, how do we then create the grid versions of these animations? Well, we're gonna duplicate this, call this one six by six, hit enter and open this new composition. And we wanna delete this animation because we're going to extract separate strings in a new method this way. Uh, we're gonna assign each individual index a, a unique character. So, and we'll do this sequentially. Delete this animation. And then we wanna add this output object to a duplicator. So just simply select the output and in the shelf, click the duplicator and that will automatically create a duplicator and add this as the input object. And if we're gonna do the six by six first, we will add, we'll go to count and we'll change this to six. We'll hold option, hit enter, and that will equal out both sides. So we have a six by six grid. And then in order to get the right size for these, we know it's a 1080 by 1080 comp. We can change the size to 1080. And then because we have six items here, we can divide this by six, hold option, enter and that'll give us 180 on the size. And then we'll do the same thing with the scale. We'll just hit divide by six, option enter. And now we've got a perfectly aligned six by six grid of these 1080 by 1080 images. Now, how do we assign an individual character to every duplicate in this duplicator? Well, they need their index to correspond with the character that they're going to reference. So to do this, my first thought was to use the stagger behavior because you want to assign IDs between a range, but there's actually an even better function that works with uh, integers like this where we're referencing an index essentially, and it's called uh, the sequence utility. So if you go to the start position and here right clicking, you see behaviors, arrays, math, there's this utility option and under utility we have sequence. And now what sequence does, it just generates a sequence of numbers, an array of numbers between a certain range. And automatically it's set to randomize. We're gonna turn that off. And we're gonna set our sequence range from zero to 35. And now this will give every duplicate its own ID based on the string manipulator and which string we are extracting from our longer 36 character string. Now the order isn't quite correct, so we'll go into the duplicator and under distribution, we'll do the additive distribution again, which is the sort. And then under sort, we will choose our mode and the mode will be set to vertical. Now we have our duplicator with a six by six grid of all 36 MP4s and they're playing back at the same time. And this is actually really impressive playback for the amount of media that we have going at once and we'll all loop. And now we've sort of automatically created this way of generating this final social media post for 36 days of type. Well, now we have the foundation for how to do the grid. Let's do the three by three versions as well. And with the three by three, we actually need four different outputs of this. So we need a way to sequence uh, again in the render setting, um, which reference number we're beginning with. So let me show you exactly what I mean. In the duplicator, let's set this back to three by three, and then we'll just multiply our size by two, option enter, and then we'll multiply our scale by two, option enter. 
And now we've got a perfect three by three grid. But as you can see, we're only A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And we need a way for the next render to start with J. And there's a really convenient way to do this in Cavalry Pro as well. And this is the dynamic render function. Okay, so how will that work exactly with this setup here? Well, we need to enable this number to be offset because in the sequence we can change the start point on which we're going to reference our images. So if I change the offset to nine, that will actually begin with this number here, and now we're starting at nine with J. So we need a way to connect this to the dynamic index. Hit Command B. You can see this dynamic index here. We need a way to say, when this references the next comp, when the index changes to one, this is now offset by nine. So we can do that with a math. So we go to offset, right click, and go add math, and we'll just add a simple math function here. And in this math, we wanna say, the first number here will be our index, our dynamic index. So that'll be zero. And then we're gonna multiply zero by nine, and our output will remain at zero. And if we change this to one, our output will then be set to nine. And then if we change this to two, then we're starting at 18. And lastly, if we set this to three, this will be our last comp here. So once we connect, hitting Command-B, this dynamic index to our first operator in this math, we've now set up a render system. Now if we go to Add Current Composition to Render, we'll set this to 3x3, three three, and then you can actually underscore. If you right-click in the file name here, you have some options for tokens. These are rendered tokens, so it would say if we have composition here, it will be the name of the composition. Uh, the scene, the project, etc. We're going to choose dynamic index, and this will allow each of these renders to have the index itself associated with it. And then what that will also prevent is this from putting each individual file in a folder later. So we'll go to format, we'll change this to MP4. And then under dynamic, we will enable dynamic render by checking this box. And we need four renders, so we'll set this to four. Great. So now, when we go to render this, let me just set this output folder here, and we'll go render all. And what you'll see happen is that once this first render finishes, it will move on to the next one and offset the number at which this point starts by nine each time. I'll speed through this so that you guys don't have to wait, but you can see it happen in real time. Now that's all done, and we can look at these renders. We have automatically created four different files that reference each of the start points of our 36 videos. So this is just one way to start working with the image smart folders and dynamic rendering within Cavalry. As you can see, we automated a system to actually be able to maybe change that folder of source media, if they were named correctly, and input that as a new batch and be able to automate all of the renders that you needed to complete the that particular series, this 36 days of type, and these six videos that we would need for social media purposes. So if you can start to think about ways to create templates like this and automate certain workflows, you can start to work smarter, not harder, even with these media assets. I hope you take something from this. I'll make sure that I link in some way uh, to the Dropbox link that has all those media folders. If you wanted to output those yourself and follow along with this tutorial, that should be available down in the description below. I'm Kyle, I look forward to seeing your work and have a great one.